Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everybody, uh, for that rousing applause. I'm really impressed. Now, I am the search evangelist. That's what happens when they let you pick out your own title. It worked out pretty well, but it is, uh, you know, something proud. My parents have no idea what it is that I do. Been doing it for a few years. And also, I'm happy to have the coveted first to go and pre-lunch spots. So not only will you completely forget about me by the third day, but I'm keeping you from food, which is almost as bad as keeping you from drinks. So thanks for not hooking me up with that four o'clock spot. So real quick, you guys, we're going to talk about the internet today, pretty much everything that goes on. Um, you know, I will talk through a little agenda in a second, but it's also important anytime uh, you think about information or statistics, where does the information come from? Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in methodology. Jeff and I were actually talking about that this morning. So real quick, just so everybody understands who is Comscore and why would you trust anything that I have to say? You know, as uh, Peter had said, I do believe we are the leading measurement firm as far as internet research goes worldwide. We have a little over 2 million people under panel measurement, people that have opted in in 100 172 different countries lets us see everything that goes on with their computers. We take all that raw data on a monthly basis, and then we'll extrapolate and project out and deliver numbers and statistics and demographics, again, for pretty much anything that you guys can imagine. Uh, today, I'm going to run through several of those. And yes, we do see everything that everybody does. So I get some really interesting questions. You guys, if you want to hit me up with something weird later, cocktail hour, I'm happy to answer those. As far as agenda goes, you know, I'm going to run through, uh, you can see I want to start out a little worldwide context, really just talk about what's happening uh, worldwide because it's not just the United States, this isn't 1996 anymore. We will then work about a little subset as it relates to U.S. vital signs. Things, of course, are going to be uh, extremely important to everybody here in the room. And then you can see we'll talk about state of the internet as it relates to video search, mobile e-commerce and display advertising. And I promise that each of those will cross social media. Um, if there's one question I get most often, it's what's going on social media, should I buy into Facebook someday, how important is it, things like that. Uh, so I promise we will cover that. One quick anecdote, I want you to file this anecdote under when you know something has gone mainstream. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I'm sitting at the airport, it's Monday morning, 6 a.m., I'm based out of New York City. I'm with my boss and the CEO of a partner. My phone rings, it's my mother. Now, you guys can imagine we all probably have moms and dads, right? But if mom is calling at 6 a.m. on a Monday morning, the world is ending, right? It's got to be an emergency. She knows better to do this than to call me unless there's a real problem. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, you guys got to excuse me. Like, I'm literally worried about my dad. Who knows? Step over, I'm like, mom, what's going on? First thing she says to me, she goes, Eli, do I need a Facebook? <laughs> and I was like, what? She goes, yeah, yeah, do you know, do I need to get on the Twitter? <laughs> Quote. I'm like, Mom, we're not going to talk about this right now. Don't ever call me again before 7 a.m. with this kind of problem. Like, I don't know, she's just sitting in Kansas City, must be feeling lonely. I couldn't figure it out. I said, I don't call you after 10. You don't call me before 9. Anyway, but you guys, just to give you a sense, social media, when it reaches that lady in her 60s wondering if she needs a Facebook, uh, we know it's important. Now, let's talk worldwide context. What's happening across the universe? You guys can imagine, as I had mentioned, U.S. is no longer the center of it. Back, you can see 1996 on the left-hand side, about two-thirds of all the people on the internet worldwide were in the United States. In fact, that number is only 14% now. Over one and a half billion people are accessing the internet worldwide, and of course, guess what? That number grows every day. Shocker, shocker. But you guys can see on the right-hand side, uh, just as of October, some of the latest numbers about distribution throughout the world. I mean, Asia Pac at this point, of course, dominates at 40 plus percent. North America still pretty strong. Europe at 27 percent, et cetera. But the big thing to note, like, what does that mean in there? I mean, back in 96, you know, the United States is really much more of a laptop culture originally, or laptops and desktops. And every Everybody else around the net or around the world, as far as how they began to access the net, was much more mobile driven, you know, as they began to adopt. And also, those are the types of countries that had much earlier broadband access across the entire country, built out infrastructures. So, just as you think about internationally, if you're trying to reach different audiences, those groups around the world are going to be much more advanced as it relates to mobile internet and, again, access broadband nationwide versus the United States, which is still trying to catch up. And then also wanted to give you guys a quick breakdown as far as top 10 properties, you know, around the world, you know, within the United States and otherwise. When you see something like Google Sites, just imagine that includes not just all the Google stuff, but YouTube and anything else that they may own. So just grand properties as far as how we define the global internet. But I mean, you guys can see, I mean, close to a billion unique visitors in a given month going to Google. 
84% of those are worldwide. I think earlier on the guys were talking about in Europe, one of the most important places in my opinion as far as Google's concerned. Right now I'll just say it's UK, Germany, and France in fact, as far as the top three that are accessing Google. And if you guys can imagine, we're going to talk later on about out of all the searches that take place, how much dominance there is there. But the point you guys can see is that every place at this point is you know, a worldwide internet piece. So you got to keep that in mind whenever you're creating websites and optimizing. It's not just about the United States, unless it's all you care about, and then fair enough, it is just about the United States. Now, let's talk US vital signs. What's happening in the United States? Is the internet still growing? Believe it or not, there are people in the US that are not on the internet. I know it seems weird, right? Does anybody in here know anybody that does not use the internet at all, that is like not under the age of two? Right, so a couple. But I'll tell you guys numbers wise, 7%. Year over year, still up 7% of people that are accessing the internet. And in fact, what's more important is the average number of daily visitors up 33%. And that's really what's happening in the United States. It's not just about size, it's really about engagement. So when you think about these numbers, I want you to think about how much more often everybody, whether it be in this room or anybody else, whether they're a heavy medium, internet, uh, heavy medium or light internet user, how much they're actually accessing the internet for everything, more day-to-day -day stuff. It's not just search, it's not just to find a movie, maybe it's to order a pizza, maybe it's to like, you know, uh, check a review, it could be anything, right? There's a million different things we all go for. But that's really what I want you to think about as far as the growth, it's really more about engagement at this stage. What categories might be driving this? You guys can see entertainment, news, portals, community. Conversational media is what includes social media, so your, your Twatters and your Facebooks, of course. Uh, search numbers are down a little bit, but I'll tell you guys, as far as engagement goes, time-wise, that's because we're actually finding what we need faster. The search engines are getting better. I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to keyword level stuff. Uh, and then you guys can see the top categories as far as engagement goes. Portals, social media, I mean onward. Uh, one little anecdote, we do track triple X and adult. You know, for most of our clients, we'll suppress it if need be. But that's probably the number one question I get, right? It relates to sex. Everybody wants to know about it. And I'll tell you guys this, is that everybody, literally everybody of all walks of life accesses porn at one time or another throughout the month. So I know you all have mothers and family and you know, we don't need to talk about that. But I always find that to be that is the number one question so I'll get it out of the way now so you guys don't have to hit me up at cocktail hour later about it. So unique visitors, social networking, yes I promised we would have some social networking stuff for you guys. You can see I mean, social networking sites, visits have increased 15% in the United States year over year. No surprise there, I mean you can see Facebook uh, growing at enormous clips as we talk about. I mean we were just talking about the movie, we're going to be at a billion worldwide Facebook users soon enough. But certainly as far as unique visitors to the site and engagement with it, that is also growing at double digit numbers. The other thing I'd like to note here is that LinkedIn, you know, which is recently filed for its IPO, is actually now the third largest social networking site. You know, we saw that, you can see just some of that commentary really has to do with, uh, you know, the poor, you know, uh, you know, economy, the job market, etc. You know, has jumped over, uh, you can see there, you know, Twitter. But I will say that that Twitter piece is only people that are accessing Twitter through the, uh, you know, like the desktop and laptop internet. So that does not include, say, people that have downloaded apps. But I will talk about Twitter on mobile later on, I promise. And you guys, MySpace, we think it's, oh, it's MySpace. Still kind of a big deal. You're still talking about a large number of people that are accessing that at a given time. It might be down, uh, but still has some value out there as far as social networking goes. Last couple pieces of the US context, I did just want to put in something about current events, right? We all think about, you know, we read the news or we're involved in news or we watch the news, whatever it might be. How does it actually impact what goes on in the net and how might that impact different things that you guys are dealing with? Because you might have, say, domain specific names for certain industries and different ways you want to be able to get in front of your audience. Healthcare, right? Kind of a big important thing over the course of the past year. Uh, the passing of some sort of basic universal health care throughout the United States. You guys can see searches for health insurance companies these roads 56% year over year. That's an enormous jump as far as like actual branded searches for a particular item. I just like to keep that in mind that things on the internet are topical. People do turn to it immediately. So again, keep that in mind as it relates to different domains that you might be having or buying. If you see something hot happening in the news, it is always a good recommendation to immediately go to the GoDaddy or one of these other places here and maybe check out. Maybe there's something you can capitalize on. 
And then the other piece as well, you know, beyond search is just getting into visitation, but also paid and organic strategy. What do you talk about? Marketing, of course. And this is just a quick piece, if you guys could imagine, um, you know, when people are looking for various health insurance plans, double the total number of clicks have happened over the course of the past year and quadruple the number of paid clicks. That's another important thing to remember when it comes to hot, uh, you know, hot items, things that are driven, that are very timely. Paid search is the best way to go, and people absolutely will hit on those things, uh, even if it's something news-related. It's not necessarily just uh, for products. So just something to keep in mind. Now, video. So we'll keep moving along. Uh, we'll talk about video. I want to talk about this is both long form, short form content. You can talk about advertisements. It's videos of all kinds. So how big is the video market in the United States currently? Online video viewing, again, like everything else, guess what? It's growing. It's getting bigger. But you guys, how big is it? You can see out of, in the U.S., let's say there's about 215 million, uh, you know, unique people that are online at any given time, you know, in the United States. 179 million of those actually saw a video, and this is uh, information as of October. 84% of those, uh, you know, so that's the number, 84% is about, that saw one. You guys will see 77% viewed at least one ad video. So this is also when you think about monetization and how people engage. I'll tell you guys this, one underlying, or overlying, I guess, depending on how you want to look at it. One theme I want to leave you with, if there's one thing that goes on here, people don't mind being advertised to, right? It's a big thing, it comes up, and you, know, you talk about who wants to opt out of stuff, but I'm telling you the mass majority of people don't care. Right? They don't mind seeing ads, they don't mind, as long as it's free, it saves them trouble. So just keep that in mind for different things that you guys might be getting into. Uh, total number of videos viewed, over 36 billion. And just to give you guys also some further context, I'll talk a little bit later about YouTube. Last month on YouTube in the United States, can anybody take a guess how many searches took place inside of YouTube? How many people went to YouTube, ran a video search? Five billion, close. It's, you know, it's getting up to be about four now. Second largest search property on the planet. So uh, I, people always wonder, I think that's a pretty good acquisition a few years ago for about 1.65 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, but you guys can see the year over year growth as far as video views go, videos per viewer, et cetera, et cetera. But the other things, it's about user experience. You know, how can we go ahead and create not too long ad rolls, but we also want to make sure it's HD content, but how do you do rights for UGC, which is user generated content, things that are uploaded. I mean, these are all issues that are still being dealt with, but just sort of a baseline to give you guys a sense about what's happening video-wise along uh, on the internet. And again, surprise, it's, again, we're going back to growth, right? That's sort of one of the main themes here. But you guys can see how big, what are we talking? Unique viewers, videos, videos per viewer, minutes per video, everything is growing. And people are consuming a lot more video content. Of course, uh, the more broadband that comes on, but also as we move on to some of the next pieces, we'll talk about men and women and how they... Uh, they interact differently. And I'll talk in a second about long form video because that's really driving a lot of that heavy engagement and growth. Video activity by gender, men, watch way more videos. They stay on, videos per viewer you can see. The number of unique viewers is about the same, but minutes per viewer, uh, men you can see it's literally over twice as much as far as videos are consumed. So again, when you're thinking about different types of content or what you might be, what you might be optimizing for, what kind of target group you're going after as it relates to video, um, boys are where it's at. That said, uh, there are certain types of videos, and I can tell you guys this, you wanna know what's the number one type of video that women watch online? It is uh, soap operas. Far and away, they watch soap operas. I mean, it literally dominates in the entire thing as far as uh, women are concerned online, One Life to Live, General Hospital. Uh, don't ask me why I happen to know the names of some of these. <laughs> that said, I mean, that is, I mean, it blows everything else out of the water. Cooking shows would be second. So, long form video content. This really is what's driving the true growth and as far as the size and engagement as far as uh, video views are concerned. People watching full episodes of television shows, streaming actual movies. You know, again, the fact that they can now get this directly to their laptops, you go ahead and you miss uh, whatever you're, you watch The Bachelor, you know, whatever it is you might have missed the night before, you can immediately during your lunch hour jump on the next day and watch it. So these are the things you guys can, again, you can see some of those metrics, I'm not gonna read through those, but hours, videos, minutes per. All of that is going up and it's gonna keep getting longer. And you guys can even see Hulu is actually now the 10th most popular content video property. So uh, YouTube, of course, seriously dominates. 
And in fact, you guys, a little anecdote. Uh, I'll tell you guys this quickly. Several years ago, do you want to know the whole reason that YouTube became YouTube? Because it used to be just like Google Video and Yahoo Video and YouTube. Everybody remember that time, right, before YouTube became really big? It was one video that absolutely drove YouTube to the top, and it was the Saturday Night Live, um, the video that relates to the Prince of Narnia rap. You guys know what that is, right? You ever see this? Okay, it was that one video, the viral video, that drove YouTube inside of a 30-day period to take what was, you know, about the same video percentage or share to being dominant about 80% of the video views that happened. Happened inside of 30 days. Pretty amazing, not bad. So, those are just a couple of fun anecdotes. Now, let's move on to search. Again, I'm a search evangelist. I'm a total homer. These are my favorite slides. So, anything you guys need to know, I can tell you about it. That said, global search, how important is it? Is it still big? Is it still growing? You guys can imagine it's pretty big at this point. I mean, you're talking about close to 140 billion searches took place last month. That's on any place on the internet that has a search box. So that's not just search engines. You can see the growth pretty much across every major property that you can imagine, except AOL. Um, but you can see United States, China, Baidu is huge. But also, let's not forget that in each different uh, area around the world, Although Google, uh, you know, is delivering about two-thirds of worldwide search traffic at this point, it completely differs depending upon market. Yandex in Russia, um, you've got to imagine Baidu in China, Naver in, um, uh, in South Korea. So again, there's a lot of places that Google has troubles as it relates to double-byte characters. So again, something to uh, just keep in mind as far as local coverage. I always thought this is fun. People always want to know, what are top searches? What, what are people looking for? So we actually pulled this together. Uh, this is for the year of 2010. Top 10 searches that took place on Google or took place on Yahoo. Facebook and YouTube, no surprise, right? People use searches as navigation. They turn on, they open up their browser as opposed to going up to the URL bar. They are lazy. They just type in Facebook into the box. And they use that to navigate them. But number four search term on Google is Yahoo. Number three search term on Yahoo is Google. And it's the same idea you can imagine on any of the engines. I mean, I just think that that is really funny, that you are literally in a search box, and people are so drawn to have to go to Google to search, or I think of Yahoo more as a destination portal, because people go there for mail or finance or a variety of different things. It's still you know, one of the largest properties on the planet. But isn't that funny that you know, you're literally sitting inside of a search box on Yahoo, and instead of searching for whatever you need, you type in Google. So just keep that in mind. I always find that to be interesting. Um, further color about searches in just a minute. Now, how big is the United States search market? I mean, out of that 100, what was 138.8 billion searches last month, about 27 billion of those took place in the United States, which actually represents a 23% growth rate year over year. Not necessarily being driven by the size of people. Remember, we only saw a 7% increase in the total US internet size, but it's really about searches per searcher. This is an engagement metric that we like to uh, monitor very, very closely. How often are you turning to search in order to get you to where you need? In the same way, again, we just looked at it. You don't type in Facebook. You go to Google and you search for Facebook. So you guys can imagine that number is actually up, um, you know, 15% searches per searcher, way bigger than that 6% increase in total unique searchers. It's about 120 to, it's actually, you know, as of the late, closing in on 130 searches per searcher. So, I mean, think about it. That's a pretty big number, and I bet you most everybody in this room probably runs most, uh, probably about that many, if not many more. But what is the growth being driven by? It's really about medium and light searchers, you know, the mobs. My mom, at least, right? So, you guys, as we talked about it, the, the heavy searcher, the people that make up 61% of all searches in the United States, the top 20%, they average 379 searches per searcher. Now, that's a big number, right? I don't even know if I run that many searches in a given month. That said, as you can see, that number is only up 10% year over year. It's those medium and light searches, the other 70 or 80% of people being up 23 and 29%. That's really talking about the engagement when we talk of you know, the sophisticated internet user, which again, I'm going to assume that most of you are probably that, is that it's really more moving into that medium and light user about engagement. So just something else to keep track of, again, the different type of marketplace you might want to be accessing, depending upon what's happening in search. Now, all searches are not taking place just on the big engines, right? I'll show you this graphic in a second. 27 billion searches, about 16 some odd billion of them take place on the big five. But 10 plus billion take place on these other engines. YouTube, as we talked about, but you can see, um, you know, right here, you just talk about your big five, but I really wanted to get to, hang on, those numbers. And those numbers are up. You can see the number of non search engine searches are actually up a little bit more than search engine searches, up over 26%. Oh. 
But this is where I wanted to get to, is really thinking about it. People are turning away from the engines in order to get to more vertical or specialized search, in order to find what they need. I mean, eBay, over 750 million searches took place on eBay, Craigslist, but Facebook was actually up over 100%. I actually wrote a column last year about, you know, has Facebook ever become a viable search engine? Maybe. I mean, you guys, I get that question a lot as well, so just in case anybody wants to know, not really hitting a critical mass yet that it matters. Second, not really getting into things beyond people searching. That said, searching on Facebook, you know, sort of reminds me of searching about 15 years ago when you had to be very bland about what you needed. Maps, shoes, shirts. You couldn't be specific, right? Because the search engines were not very sophisticated. It actually mirrors it almost exactly. So we'll see what will happen with Facebook over the course of the next few years. If they go public, they decide to buy companies. Maybe they'll get something like an actual technology versus just being a marketing company. But something to keep your eye on as far as total number of searches that are taking place. Something we track on a pretty close basis. Now, last couple pieces I want to leave you with are also what's happening uh, search-wise on the actual search engine result page, or SERP for short. Blended search. Everybody has heard of blended search or universal search. This is essentially any type of search result that gets beyond just text, right? So it has an image, it has a picture, it's when you type in and it gives you a little weather icon up at the top or the stock quote, whatever it might be. And you can see as of October, out of all the searches that took place in the United States, over one-fourth of those contain blended search. Okay, so that number is growing. Why is that important? And it's be important because blended search results actually drive a much higher click-through rate, unless it is something like a weather quote where you don't actually have to click through to get it, you just needed it right then, it answers your question. But if you guys have links and you want to actually drive uh, you know, much grander click-through rates, especially on Google Instant, which we'll talk about, you can gain the system. <laughs> you can totally gain the system currently. Google does uh, favor blended search, right? So it will push those things up to the top. And specifically, as people get into Google Instant, as they start to see images, it's like they will stop and rubberneck or they're seeing an accident on the road, they'll just stop because they saw a picture come up. So just something to keep in mind as far as your websites go. Uh, and actually, I want to talk about the domains here. So Google Instant, I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with this, but the question is always put to me, how is it actually impacting what's happening? You know, how have things changed? You can see, uh, you know, Google Instant, just for anybody that might not know, as you're typing something in, Google is dynamically changing the results based on suggestions that it's giving you based on what it thinks your intent is, what the term that you're going for. Now, historically, query length has really been going up year over year, really reaching about three words plus, so three words per search, and that gets back to, again, 10, 15 years ago, you could only put in one word. But in fact, since Google Instant has come about, that number has dropped for the first time, really like, you know, effectively dropped uh, in at least a few years. Just to give you guys a sense, as of September, October, you're seeing about 22% of the queries at that time were going to be instant. And of course, that does not include uh, like non-search uh, entities that they would be, say, distribution networks or mobile and stuff. They said they would get to that in the future. It's a lot of processing power. But just to give you guys a sense of where that is going as far as number of searches are concerned. But this is really where we get into the issue, right? It's about typed versus submitted queries. So typed is what you physically typed, and the submitted is going to be what the actual search is based on. Uh, you can see Sonoma Y or Sonoma County wineries, right? So, and that plays into these stats. Across the board, everything is down. Queries are down, number of characters are down, in both typed and submitted. You can see average query length in characters, average query length in words. And specifically, when I was thinking about this audience, here's a big issue for you guys. People that might be going and typing in the actual navigational address, they're typing in a domain name, might be presented with something else before they get that far and go with it. So I want you guys to think about it when you're going about optimizing or creating paid search campaigns or creating SEO for your particular websites, uh, especially for domains in particular, this is something you really have to consider uh, if you're thinking about Google is how deep is somebody going to get and what's going to be suggested to them. You know, things are, you know, Google is actually favoring branded searches about 5% more of the time just because they're more head terms. So just keep that in mind. I thought that would be a pretty important metric. And I have actually more in-depth information about this if anybody wanted to hit me up later. I uh, gave a, a, an hour-long presentation about Google Instant. Just some interesting stats to consider. Mobile. It's a year of mobile. Yay. <laughs> you guys heard that before? It's been going on about five years, right? Everybody says, it's mobile. This year's mobile, it's big. Mobile is big. Well, I'm telling you, mobile is pretty big these days. Let's talk about some stats. Where are we? You guys, as of what looks like about 2014, the number of global mobile internet users will actually eclipse the number of 
internet users via desktop and other means. So you guys can see just from a quantification how that's going. So certainly it's important we want to keep up on this, right? Now, as far as the segmentation goes, you guys, in the United States, 43% of mobile phone owners actually browse the mobile internet, so less than half. Right, so the number of people that are just using voice is down 17% year over year. So of course, more internet as far as you know, where we're going, but it's not everybody, right? It's not everybody is on a smartphone. We'll show you those stats in a second, but just keep that in mind that you know, about 70% of mobile phone owners are using their phones for more than just making calls. But there's, you know, as you can see, that light blue in the bottom left, those are people that just text but actually don't get into the internet. So, you know, that number's growing, but again, you're not going to reach everybody uh, via mobile, so don't just throw all your money at it. That said, as far as key market enablers, these are the things that contribute in order to make you have, uh, you know, greater access to the internet on your mobile web. About 50% of U.S. mobile subscribers now use a 3G handset or smartphone. So, you know, people think hey, everybody's got an iPhone, everybody's got an Android, it's still only half. Um, you can see, although the ownership is up 68% year over year, trends are going in that fashion. Uh, just keep in mind, at this exact moment, not everybody is just ready to be advertised to and playing games and downloading apps. Um, but you can see unlimited data plan subscribers, that grew 39% year over year. That is the number one most important thing that we see in driving internet usage, is that unlimited data plan. People don't have to pay for every bit that they might potentially be using. They just want a flat rate, get it done, and then they can start going and cruise. So to keep that in mind, it's a very positive sign we see as far as future growth goes. Now, Androids versus iPhones. Who has an iPhone? You guys are cool. Who has an Android? You guys are cooler. No, I'm just kidding. Um, now, but his question, you know, it comes up all the time. iPhone versus Android, where do we stand? How does that figure into versus Microsoft? I can tell you guys, you can see the number of smartphone users that's up. But, the, you know, in the past five to seven months, Apple has also held their share. But Android has completely stolen it from Microsoft. You can see they are now the second most popular type of telephones uh, as far as smartphones go, you know, reaching almost one quarter of the marketplace. So Apple is running at about 35%, uh, or excuse me, that's BlackBerry. Apple is running at one quarter. Android is right below it at 23.5%. So these are things just to keep in mind as far as what type of operating system you might want to be optimizing for, where you might be buying ads, just uh, you know, as far as volume of that, of that group goes. But who is the average mobile user, right? At this point, the mobile media user, who are these people? How do they differ from the internet? The average mobile media user is 33 years old and 48% are female. So of course, 52% are male. But you guys can see uh, younger demographics. These are people that are definitely into their phones. Uh, it seems, you know, it's pretty standard, but it does play out in the statistics, I promise. Um, but mobile internet services, browsing, apps, and email actually skew 55 to 60% male. You know, so women tend to play a lot more games on their cell phones. You might have heard that about the internet before, same thing on their cell phones. As far as ringtones go, they like to customize, you know, bedazzle and such. But also, uh, you know, playing into games is something that we do see. The demographics for mobile internet browsers by OEM, original equipment manufacturers, will vary. So again, you can see something like Blackberries, older white males, right? Surprise. But you, know, you can see LG and Samsung device owners are actually younger, have an even gender split. So again, depending upon the device, and that goes back into the operating system, just want you to keep in mind how things are going and where that plays. Apps. Apps are not nearly as ubiquitous as you might think. Everybody in this room, they probably, I do, I, trust me, I'm on my apps all the time doing stuff. I'm one of the interweb people. But I can tell you this, is that apps are not nearly as big as you might think. So 33% of mobile phone subscribers access apps now that's growing, it's a big number. Should I create an app for my company? Is it important? Maybe, depends on who you want to go after. It's most prevalent by smartphone owners. You, know, you can see more than 80% using the application, but that is growing at a faster rate than the overall market. So just keep that in mind. Literally only one third of the people that are using cell phones right now are using apps. Uh, just sort of a key thing to think about. Quantify the market, don't necessarily get caught up in the hype. Twitter, right, we're back to social networking, yay. So Twitter, not yet dominating social networking, even on your cell phones, people are on Facebook, you can see three quarters of people are accessing social networking sites, um, you know, are accessing Facebook, YouTube is number two, MySpace, and Twitter is actually on about 13%. Now that has grown, 53%. But again, depending upon what you're going to be doing, you know, if you're going to be running ads, you're going to be getting involved in Twitter campaigns, you're still only going to be reaching X number of people, that 13 plus percent. Numbers growing fast, but I'd just like you guys to keep that in mind, uh, keep that in context. Again, don't believe the hype. And then mobile advertising best suited for brands with targets under the age of 44. 
So again, that gets back to the average type of person that is going to be you know, consuming display advertising uh, you know, through their mobile phones, who's on smartphones is going to be seeing that. Just keep that in mind as far as the apps and the market browsing, et cetera. Uh, with over 50% males between 18 and 44 are using the mobile browser, mobile banner advertisements are actually an ideal way to engage. So if that's your audience, go for it. If your audience is ladies over the age of 65, probably not a good place to put your money. And then the last piece is also how are people using their cell phones as it relates to spending? Are they making actual purchases at this point? And you guys can see that little circle at the bottom, 77%, just to summarize that whole thing, 77% of the people are not using their cell phone at all when they're shopping for gifts. This is from our holiday uh, survey that we did, and you can see some of the other pieces. I mean, some people are checking coupons and some people are doing this, but it really has not reached ubiquity yet. So also keep that in mind as far as point of sale, where there are some issues being now. Uh, you can see sort of at the bottom from CNBC, I thought that was a really good quote, that mobile websites are reminiscent of where the overall web was 10 years ago, performance-wise. So it's also up to the companies that need to improve their mobile offerings. It's not just that you or I don't feel as if we need it. It's that when we're trying to fumble around with it, we don't get what we need, so we just pass up and move on. Now, e-commerce. What kind of dollars are being spent? Where are they being spent? Well, I'll tell you guys, you can see North America, Western Europe actually count for 63% of the e-commerce sales currently, but Asia and the rest of the world, that little circle on the right-hand side, you know, moving into 2011, that's going to see the greatest growth. These are the biggest dollars that we're going to see as far as percentage growth. That said, I mean, the size of the marketplaces on the left are, are pretty big as far as North America and Western Europe goes, but just want to give you a sense about where, you know, where the dollars are going. Developing countries are spending money. Now, what about the United States, a little subset of that? Are we anywhere close to where we were a couple years ago? This was the big hiccup, first time in e-commerce history as of you know, between 2008 to 2009. E-commerce, as far as you know, actual dollars spent, dropped. This was a huge ordeal. Everybody was bugging out. You can see it was down 2%. As far as the numbers go, now through the first three quarters of 2010, we're up to 165 billion you know, in the United States. We will eclipse that number and be back onto a regular push. So people are definitely turning to the internet much more often. The share of wallet is getting bigger as far as what they're spending online now out of all of the retail dollars spent online. 10%, uh, excuse me, out of all the retail dollars spent in the United States, 10% of those actually now happen online. But also remember that doesn't include things like gasoline and food, things that you can't buy online really. So we do give it an apples to apples, but just to give you some perspective about um, you know, where that's going. This is a stat that I don't know if this depresses me or, or where I feel about this, but during the course of the past couple of years, the top 25 online retailers have actually stolen a large chunk of market share from small vendors. Right, we usually think of the internet, it's, uh, you know, it's a meritocracy, you do well, you can be a small company and gather people up. Well, in fact, the big companies with all their branding and all their deals and all their free shippings over the course of the past you know, one year have actually gone and gathered up another five percentage points as it relates to uh, you know, smaller companies. So there's actually less dollars that are being spent uh, you know, on small and medium-sized companies that are on the big boys. The other thing to think about as it relates to this is more people are finally spending money on pure plays versus multi-channel retailers. A multi-channel retailer being a Best Buy. You could walk into the store and buy online. Pure play is going to be an Amazon, and there's no Amazon store to walk into. Is that you know, people are becoming increasingly more comfortable with buying online from pure plays, and specifically the, that growth is being driven by women. Women have uh, you know, always felt much more comfortable shopping online if they could actually go to a store and physically talk to somebody or handle a product. And we've seen a huge growth in that piece there. So women buying from the pure plays has also driven a lot of that growth. And then uh, I do just like to point out e-commerce wise, Google, it's important, right? They're always looking to compete in pretty much any given area because they can. So they're in there in the online comparison shopping space as far as Google product search goes, but they still face stiff competition. I mean, Amazon is a beast and still growing year over year. Um, you know, really at this point, I just don't see it stopping. And then you could also push into, you can see eBay also as large as it is as far as dollars are being spent. So Google, you know, making some inroads there, but nothing, uh, Nothing that, that, that's really going crazy or changing it. Groupon, anybody heard of Groupon? Right? It's a whole big ordeal. I can tell you guys the group buying is growing increasingly large. So you see a lot of things. You see the dollars they say they're generating. But I could also tell you from a pure unique visitor basis, this space is 
incredibly strong. Groupon, Living Social, you could see up 800 or 650% as far as unique visitors to the websites. And in fact, I thought it was a very interesting psychological piece in sitting down with a friend of mine that's a professor. He just says, listen, you know, he talks about people that like to go, uh, you know, when you think of like, say, teenage girls that go shopping in groups. Why wouldn't they do the same thing online? Why didn't anybody think of that 10 years ago? So it was, uh, you know, I thought an interesting psychological play as far as why these things are doing so well because what do you do when you find a good deal? You want to tell your buddy. You're not going to believe what a great deal I got. Trust me, I do it all the time. So keep that in mind as far as psychologically why we see that these are doing so well. And then the other piece is invitation only luxury sites are also doing way well. You know, you can see some of these places from the Gilts and Idealies and Hot Look and Rue La La. You know, but the other piece that's really interesting about them is that they lend themselves very, very well to uh, over 100K, like a very hot target demographic. So just they have very high income skews. Uh, you know, if you're rich, you still want deals. Let's say that. And this last piece in e-commerce, and then we'll, we'll close out with display advertising and questions. How am I doing for time, by the way? I'm not, not over, and you guys aren't bored yet, are you? You look totally into this. So let's try and true. You guys can imagine, think about it over the course of uh, holiday season. We want to actually ask people, where do you remember? How are your purchases influenced? So the question was, which of the following sources assisted you in making a holiday purchase decision? The one that I circled there, in fact, social media. Okay. Only 5% of the people surveyed, and we're pretty good with our surveys, I promise, it's a large set of people, remember that it was social media that influenced them. Now. Nobody be running off the Wall Street Journal and saying Eli and Comscore said social media doesn't matter. It was getting me in trouble. But I just want to point that out that it's important to remember when you, know, you don't want to abandon like, these classic things. Everybody's like, oh, let's just go for the hot piece. Right? Now we're going to be doing social media. I'm going to be on Twitter. I'm going to be doing all this different stuff. But you guys remember direct browsing, search, coupons. I mean, these things still work. Right? When the internet happened, I felt as if 100 years of advertising, research, and intelligence just thrown out the window. They're like, everything's trackable now. Impressions don't matter. Brand doesn't matter. All that money doesn't at all. It's easy. It's a whole new science. The classic way that you advertise that people still plays. So keep that in mind. And again, even though the recall on social media is low, it still matters. I mean, Facebook is taking over 25% of all of the display advertising views at this point in the United States. Just thought that was a really interesting statistic, how people recall what actually influenced. And the last piece, display advertising. Um, you know, this is also, again, when you go back to a true growth market at this point, because everybody, really, it's been search. I mean, the past decade has been all about search. I'm definitely seeing a resurgence in display. It is important. It does matter. You guys can see, just to give you guys a sense of dollars, online, online advertising revenue per internet user has grown since the inception of the internet. Surprise, the internet grew. But you guys, how big is that? I mean, that's a thousand percent growth in actual spend. That's a big chunk of money that used to be going someplace else. $54 billion in 2009. And you can see some of the other plays as far as global internet users, ad revenue, et cetera. And then what are the top advertisers? I mean, you know, I always think this is interesting. If you think about when you're running around, who do you actually see most often? And in fact, it's telecoms and financial companies. Out of the top 10, you guys can see AT&T, Verizon, Sprint. I mean, they are all over you as far as display advertising goes. And the same thing when you think about somebody like Experian, which is like freecreditreport.com, uh, or also you can see uh, Scott Trade, the financial companies. These are the places that actually do the most investing. Hey, social networks, surprise. So social networks have actually caused people to spend a lot more time online. But again, this actually relates directly to display advertising. As a result, they are taking Huge amounts, of inf huge amounts of display advertising inventory from the portals. It used to be everybody, they would access the internet, they would go to Yahoo first, or they'd go to MSN, some sort of general homepage, or the homepage within uh, their cable company. You know, the social nets are actually taking, you can see that is up year over year, as far as uh, about 80% share of display ads, because of course the total minutes spent, I mean people pretty much spend their entire lives hanging out on Facebook looking at pictures of their buddies. And then the last piece, CPMs, dollars is you can see the display ads per total page actually up a little bit, you know, because display advertising is coming back. There's more inventory to be had. And CPM trends across all the verticals, I really want you to look at the gray versus, uh, versus gray, but I'm telling you those numbers are, you know, slightly ticking up year over year. I don't have some of the other pieces historically from 2008, 2009, uh, just because I, or early 2008, 
early 2009 because I forgot to put them in there. But I can tell you that those numbers are up, I do promise. So the, the dollars that are being invested and then how much you could actually monetize uh, because companies are doing a much better job of, uh, you know, sort of explaining to their customers the advertising effectiveness of what it is that they do. And then ad dollars are finally shifting away from email, lead generation, and classifieds. And really at this point, I mean the mass majority of its search display online video makes up, I mean you guys can see that's 70 plus percent out of all of the dollars that are being spent. Search is about flat as far as the percentage goes, display being up a little bit. A lot of people you can see jumping into rich media and video, those gray ones in the middle, you know, gathering up a little bit more of their fair share. So uh, again, just new things that are going on out there, different types of ad formats that people are interacting with. And I'm a big believer in crowd science. The reason the money is going there is because it's working. They're not just experimenting, it's happening because people are actually making money off of it. And that's it. They're the highlights. Now, do we ask some questions? I know, that ran long. Did I run long? That was a long time. No. All right. Everybody's Please. See, everybody wants to eat. I promise, I'll be, I'll be quick. You, sh you shared some remarks about uh, Instant, Google Instant. Yeah. Could you comment on how Google Places is impacting the SERPs? In your opinion, I mean, I'm, it's obviously impacting it, but I'd like to get your opinion. Yeah, could you give me an example of, you know, when you're thinking of what's the issue? Well, if you're doing SEO for local businesses, right, and the objective used to be to rank in the organic, and is the algorithm the same for Google Places? Because that's the real estate that you need. Right. That's, that's what we're seeking. Well, I'll tell you this. The, you know, I wanted to work at Google, so I can't exactly say if the algorithm is the same one way or the other. That said, of course, I'm quite familiar with that layout. The problem is, is that it's going to differ depending upon who you are at any given time and what they define as your intent. That being the problem, right, is that um, just because I'm, when I'm sitting in New York and you're sitting out in LA and run the exact same search, it'll give you completely different pieces. So I, I don't have a good answer for you at this moment about you know, the true impact of that. But yes, that is really like one of the big issues, right? Being pushed down on the real estate for things that Google sees as being more important. So, but I'd be happy to look into it afterward. We can chat about it. Yeah, this will be downloadable via the website, I believe. Yes, it will. Right? Yes. You guys like it enough? You download it? That's good. What else, please? Yeah, yeah, hi, this is in reference to Google Instant also. Have you seen Google actually, since it's come out, change what it has shown as the default for the Google Instant terms? We have not, okay? So we analyze and we, you know, based on the way our panel works, I can physically see every single search term that's being delivered. And really, I, even though I was showing you guys September and October data, just because that's when I ran the study, um, it's been the same type of information since as far as number of searches, length of queries, brand versus non-brand. Because again, it lends itself to um, head searches. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the nature of what Google Ins is trying to do, get you to what you need faster. So I haven't seen Google changing around too much, um, at least not enough that we could analyze it, let's say that. So I'm sure they probably are tweaking things here and there, but so nothing that's showing up in the data to say that Google Instant in January is incredibly different than Google Instant in October. Okay, well my, my main concern and also concern I, I'm sure of a lot of other people is let's say you have computer.com, um, you want the term computer showing and it may show computers. Do you see any way that those terms can be changed at when you're putting in the word computer? And again, I haven't teched it today. Right. Like the answer is that as far as you as a marketer are right. concerned, no, right? That's, that, there, therein lies the rub, right? That's the problem is that how could you potentially jump in there, right? So that, you know, for computers, you want to show up on the page. The best thing you could do is there are various services, you know, you could buy that'll help you, you know, maybe updated searches, mm -hmm. right, as far as intelligence goes. But then maybe it just means that you need to be optimizing for a grander set of terms than you thought. So for when somebody's typing in computers, you know, you normally would be like, oh, no, whatever. Just when they type in computer, maybe there's something else you now need to move that up in your list as far as SEO importance and how you're going to go ahead and go about that. So that's my recommendation there would be to analyze the search terms that have been driving traffic to you. Right. And then best case scenario is analyze the search terms driving traffic to your competition. Mm -hmm. See how that's changed over the course of pre-Google Instant right. and post-Google Instant. And then that's where I look for the gaps and start to figure out what I would need to do. Now, again, that's a very... High level explanation, but I could talk about it later if you want. Great, thank you very much. Sure, please. I think I went all the way in the corner. 
And I'll go uh, Google instant search uh, for for th third time. Uh, nice. Paige Howe from Joe Domains. You skipped over real briefly when people are doing the Google instant search. It's going to look for. Did you call it multi varied content? You mean that we had a page that had, say, video and, say, some factual and some oh, statistics? Oh, blended search. Those are blended that, search that results. Would, and can you just spend a couple seconds on And thank you for the fast-paced and compelling presentation. I really enjoyed it. Right. I like to talk fast. You guys are a New Yorker. So, <laughs> by the way, write cool things on Twitter about me. I'll tell you about that in a sec. But anyway, so the, the reason is, is that, you know, we, we can actually analyze, and I've worked with several companies, when you talk about during Google Instant, what do eyeballs look like when they're moving across the page? And then when are people prone to stop? And then what do click-through rates look like? So in Google Instant, as people are typing, traditionally people are very specific. They're still used to typing very extended search phrases. But what happens is that when they are presented with blended search results, so images and pictures and these different things, they will stop. They'll just stop typing because they'll be like, oh, there's a video. Let me check that out. Right? So that's what happens. And that's what I'm saying of, you know, when you think of ways that you might be able to, quote, game the system, <laughs> uh, to help out with Google Instant would be to come up with ways to have actual search engine facing images and blended results. Because from a user perspective, you know, regardless of how that would impact like your rankings, from a user perspective, I'm prone to stop typing when I see those things. And just to go a little slower, are you talking about the, what really happens on my site or the instantaneous updating of those search results as they're putting stuff in the The instantaneous Google? search results. Okay. What, so what the searcher is seeing. Right, right? We've all done it, right. right? We've all just been searching and then suddenly it just will throw up a bunch of videos, right? Like, you know, three videos up top. Those three videos, like way more than average, cause people to stop typing and look at the search engine result page with that stuff at the top. Fantastic. People Thank like you. images. Questions, please. Um, sorry, Michal Anika, um, Question on mobile. Um, you have mobile. Do you consider iPad mobile as well? Is the iPhone? Um, an, I, an iPad? iPad. Do you consider that mobile interneting like the oh. iPhone, or is it part of traditional surfing? As far as what we're talking about here on these statistics, it's purely based on like your classic cell phone. Yeah. Right? So it's not something we're not getting into. We don't have that in our panel at this time, so I can't speak to that. Okay, well, I'm asking the question because we had a lot of discussion about what uh, mobile is going to mean for the domain name industry. Right. And the issue we never resolved in those discussions is that um, what is mobile going to be in the future? Is it going to be like the iPhone or like the iPad? Sure. And I mean, one or the other could mean totally different things for the industry. And well, you know, let's say this. On that. Let's say this. Certainly from a, an adoption perspective, the iPhone and things of that nature, the smartphones, is way further along than those other types of, say, mobile devices. Yeah. That said, is you know I don't have statistics, so I can't really say at this moment about which way it'll go, one way or the other. But I'm sorry, iPad, iPad. I thought you said iPads. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just being honest. So anyway, iPads. Yes, the question becomes that will fall underneath that as far as how people are accessing the mobile internet. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's just not something that we have, and it's not, you know, slates although they will move into it. I mean, as far as adoption goes, there are just way more cell phones and there will be slights for many, many, many years to come. Because you also think about a cell phone for somebody in Africa, you know, or somebody in New Zealand, right? There's going to be a lot more of those people that will be having just like a basic cell phone to access the internet than they're going to be having like an iPad anytime soon. Okay. So that's, that's my feeling on it, you know. Please. Uh, yes, I am very impressed with all the data. Um, um, I'm a novice, new to the industry, so I'm just quickly, what can you share about, 172 countries is very impressive, but what can you share about how you gather this data? I know demographics in a regular real estate environment, but I don't understand the dem demographics of the internet yet. So what can you share about how you gather your data and why you get to see everything? Sure. Um, basic statistics 101 is you, you can imagine it's sampling. You know how, for example, you'll be watching TV and there'll be like a Gallup poll that says we called 300 people and said, would you vote for this person or not? And then they have a number, right? That same basic principle applies to what we do is we take a sampling in any given marketplace of internet usage and then based on our proprietary extrapolation, which is you know, the sampling technique, we'll then project out at a national level. So 
there would be, and you need a certain number of people in a given, let's say there's one million people in the United States that we use in order to make projections of the 200 million people. Well, then you're going to need many less people in the UK or France or Japan, for example, in order to make projections. So that's really, that's, I would say that's the basis for where the numbers come from, right? Now, as far as who are those people, we do recruiting. Right? So we have constant recruiting that we do worldwide in order to invite people to be in our panel. So we go out to find a representative panel of people in the same way that people would just be calling in order to make, again, for that Gallup poll, they're just calling people randomly. We use much more sophisticated techniques than that. It's really online recruiting. Um, if anybody's familiar, we used to do random digit dial, RDD, if anybody's heard of that. We stopped doing that many, many years ago because there's a lot of people worldwide that don't have home telephones which is where they get gathered up. So what will happen is, and again, I'm happy to go into this in length since we have one more question to get to, but uh, you know, we actually will drop, or drop a tracking applet onto those people's machines in any of those given marketplaces, and then on a daily basis it sends us off. It basically, in order for them to access their internet service provider, it goes through us first. So we see everything that they do, all the log files, all the impressions, all the display ads that they saw, every place they visited, and also they sign up, and we have a really cool demographic definition technology I can tell you about so it knows if it's a mom or daughter or husband sitting at the computer at any given time. Please. Eli, we're going to wrap it up because okay. um, we have lunch to go right. to. So it's and I do have a lunch table. And he has know. a lunch table. That's what I was if anybody wants to say. hang out with me, so it's cool. You can, you can spend time. Okay, right, real Please. quick, uh, related to Google Instant and, and what Larry had asked earlier, um, more specifically with keywords, so has, has there been any evidence that Google has or will change the keywords that they push? So he had said computers, right. for instance. So right now, I, I don't know offhand, but maybe they're pushing computer. Uh, and obviously, you know, from a SEO standpoint, it's, it's strategic to have the right. domain name that is exactly matched to what Google is pushing, right. especially as more and more people adopt the instant search. Easy enough. I'll tell you this. One, Will they change those keywords? You heard it here first. Google is not gaming the system. They are being as fair to the instant searches as they are to everything else. I'll tell you guys straight, I, that, is, that is legit, I promise. Second, though, of course it's going to change in the exact same way that they're constantly refining their algorithms. But think about it, whenever you type in computer or computers, they know who you are, your IP address, where you're sitting, potentially they know your entire history. So again, when you type in computers, I get a completely different search engine result page than you would, yeah. right? So it's the exact same idea, it's just flipping through those much faster. Right, so the intent as far as what it's going to be pushing, computer or computers, that'll you know, more or less shake itself out based on how the searchers, how they get what they need. Because basically, if you type in computer or C-O-M-P-U and then you just go with computer, but you don't click on anything, and then you immediately go back up and type in computers, and then you click on something, computers, based on the click-through, is enormously more relevant as far as they're concerned yeah. for you as a user. So, so that's uh, how they, they base it on, on click-through rate based on, on... It's one of many things, but click-throughs is absolutely one of the most important pieces as it yeah. relates to like a relevancy metric and Q score for anybody. Um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly the way that we judge intent, it's yeah. enormously big. If I type in Chicago Bears, and then I'm looking at tickets and memorabilia and news, and I click on tickets, that's pretty, that it knows next time yeah. I come in, if I type in New York Jets, it's going to give me tickets, right? Because it knows that might be what I'm looking for. But have you seen any evidence that they have or will change those keywords that they push? Um, I have not, but simply because the data set is so large, yeah. you could imagine that... You know, I'm not analyzing it down to a day-to-day -to, -day to look at relevancy of computer versus computers and then what the SERPs look like but even and how they're ranking But even on a larger is. scale, like such as insurance or in, you know, credit, debt, mortgages, or... The, you, you I'll just say this. The only thing that I've seen that lends itself heavily is okay. brands. But we could certainly, again, I have a whole presentation. We could talk further about it. Okay. I'd be happy to share. That's it. Eli Rules. Yes.